2010, the United Nations Committee on the Peaceful Uses of Outer Space defined long-term sustainability of space activities as the ability to conduct space activities indefinitely with the aim of equitable access to the benefits of exploration and use of outer space for peaceful purposes to meet the needs of the present and future generations. illustrated the catastrophic effect of Kessler syndrome, which is the inevitable collisional cascade of space debris that creates small debris. This may render Earth's orbit unusable one day. Let's talk to three bright aspiring future space scientists about this issue. Chuck Fo, can you tell us what are space debris? According to NASA, space debris are any non-functional human-made objects in space, particularly in low Earth orbit. This include non-functional spacecrafts, abandoned launch vehicle stages, mission related and fragmentation debris. As you can see from this chart, there's an alarming increase in space debris in the last 60 years. Right, but what are the implications of this space debris, Kolkham? The accumulation of space debris poses not only a threat to our future in space exploration, but also causes detrimental effects on Earth's environment. Each of these space debris can travel at speeds greater than 5 km per second capable of generating a collision impact like a hand grenade. Famously, in 2009, a defunct Russian satellite, Cosmos, collided with and destroyed a US Iridium satellite. This added thousands more debris into space. Let's not ignore the pollution impact. For example, the debris from the Russian proton rockets have been linked with increased risk of cancer in the eastern Siberia region. From suspected chemical pollution, resulting from the highly toxic rocket fuel residue, unsymmetrical dimethylhydrazine UDMH, a carcinogen which is harmful to plants and animals. Thanks for the insight, Tikong. So, is there an effective way that we can manage space debris then? Of course! Some of the space debris mitigation measures that are in place since the 1990s include preventing the creation of new debris, designing satellites to withstand impacts with more debris, maneuvering to avoid collisions with debris, and removal of debris from crowded orbital regions. Yes, currently, RACE is on to develop all kinds of space debris removal solutions which can be passive or active depending on the need for energy input of spacecrafts. I see. On June 24th this year, China launched a Long March 2D rocket which unfolded a drag sail a day later. What do you guys think about this? I believe that drag sail is one of the most intuitive concepts in space debris removal efforts. They are synthetic sails deployed from a spacecraft or satellite to create atmospheric drag when its mission ends. These sails speed up descent into Earth's atmosphere by inducing deorbiting, where it will eventually burn up. And drag sails have significant potential scalability due to its lower cost production and relatively simpler technology. This is a real life simulation of how drag sail works. On the left is a satellite orbiting Earth and on the right is a satellite with an attached drag sail. Notice the decrease in the orbital speed, height and radius by forcing air into the drag sail. Wow guys, that is so amazing. Thank you all for sharing so much information about space debris and its management. Lastly, let me share a video of a burning space debris, believed to be from the Chinese Long March 5B rocket that was spotted crossing the airspace of several areas in Sarawak on the 31st of July this year, highlighting the urgency of orbital space debris management. Let's not wait until a tragedy occurs before we take the action that we all know is needed. A marathon begins with the first step. Let's get started. Thank you for watching, and if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. <laughs>